Hello, I'm Josh Topper of Topper Machine, and this is our shop-built circular sawmill. We built this thing entirely in-house here at Topper Machine. Um, after several years of, of running other mills and owning other mills, uh, I've had a Enterprise, a Frick, a couple of Howells, and I've worked with other mills, uh, different manufacturers as well. And there was things about every one of them I didn't like and things I did like. So I took the best ideas and I took the worst ideas and I just kind of went with it and built what I wanted. So a lot of you that subscribe to my channel and see my videos have seen the mill in action, have asked the questions, how did you get this mill where you got it? What did you do? Why did you design it and build it? So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the camera. I'm going to go handheld for most of it. And I'm going to show you each individual piece of it and how we got to that point. So this part here that holds the blade and all the hydraulics and everything in the arbor shaft is called the husk. And this is what does all the work. Um, inside of the cover there is the hydraulic pump and the hydraulic tank and all that, and the saw arbor, and the saw collars. Um, and there's a video on my channel here of, of about saw collars um, and how we machine those. Let me open this up and show you exactly how we set this up as far as the drive. So our mill is completely hydraulic driven as far as the carriage and the sawdust augers. Um, we have our hydraulic reservoir right here to our hydraulic pump, which is chain driven off of the arbor shaft to get the speed up to where I need it. Um, the arbor is 2 and 15 sixteenths with double row tapered roller bearings, pillow block roller bearings on each end. And then the hydraulic pump feeds a priority valve that sends nine gallons a minute, priority valves right here, nine gallons a minute at, uh, I believe I'm running 1400 PSI right now, to the dr carriage drive, and then there's a splitter valve, or the, the non, the secondary hydraulics come off of that and go to a splitter valve down there, which feeds the two, two sawdust augers. They each have their own motor. And then over here is our hydraulic control valve, and a flow valve. And this is how I set my feed rate for different uh, species. Now our hydraulic reservoir, if you look at it, you see these tubes in here. These tubes go all the way through, and they allow airflow. There's a baffle just past the tubes, and when this is running, this fills up to the top with, with oil, and then spills back over into the rest of the reservoir. This is the oil cooler, built-in oil cooler. And after eight hours of running one day, the most we hit was 120 degrees on oil temp. So it, it's very effective. Now a circular sawmill requires a saw guide, and this keeps the blade from wandering. And these, this saw guide holds um, two uh, guide pins, basically, and they are hard maple that have been soaked for about six to eight weeks in uh, motor oil. So they're well lubricated. And on the other end of the saw, we have the board splitter. And this is what uh, keeps the board from, when it comes off the mill, it spreads it and keeps it from pinching and pinching on the blade. So you need a board splitter. Most of them are circular, but this is a knife type. And this is the more modern accepted uh, um, variant. Uh, a lot of places are get away, getting away from the wheel type just because they don't feel they're safe. Now this is the carriage drive drum. The carriage drive drum is uh, actually a piece of 8 inch schedule 80 pipe um, built on as a roller with a shaft through and then threaded for a 3 eighths uh, cable. So 3 eighths inch, um, it was two and a half or right around two and a half threads per inch with a radius cutter and just basically a thread so that the cable walks back and forth evenly and carries out. And that is hydraulically driven. There's our hydraulic motor, our chain drive. And uh, every motor on this mill has a case drain plumbed in. And case drains, in case anybody's wondering, do not go into the return off of anything else. They get their own separate feed into the hydraulic reservoir so that they don't create a back pressure. Now one aspect of the mill that was very important to me was the uh, sawdust removal. And after having worked with several mills with sawdust chains, I determined I hated sawdust chains. Um, they're always falling apart, they're always having issues, they're binding up. 
Um, these augers work incredibly well. And actually I bought these augers um, on an auction for $29 for the two of them. They're 10 inch augers. I couldn't build them for that price. And then I just set them up to do the job as I needed it. Um, they are both hydraulically driven. The lift auger, yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, is uh, gonna be changing out the sprockets here real soon and speeding this one up a little more because I'm just not getting the, the speed out of it I need. Um, the push auger, or the, the transfer auger underneath actually overpowers the lift auger, so that'll get upgraded soon. Now the carriage and the set works is uh, where a lot of the work happens also. It's, it's a very intricate piece of equipment. Um, my uh, log dogs are actually cam operated. Hard to see, but that is on a cam. And uh, so when you drop the handle down, it locks. Of course, I gotta follow it with the camera. And so when you release it, you can pull the dog out as far as you need it. Um, and then there is a, an additional cammed lever back here, which raises and lowers it some more. So you can get more bite if you need it. Now the, uh, the head blocks are all chain driven. That was something I, I liked about certain mills that I've worked with is the chain drive versus the rack. All driven off of this. So it's hand drive. And if you take the handle and turn it, to return you just push back. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time with gears, but it works just like that. Pretty simple, straightforward. And this is a lumber scale that I made. Um, and I had the local sign shop put it together. And this thing works really well. Um, so if you want to do a, you know, three quarter, four quarter, five quarter, you know, any anything, you just look at that. And it's adding a quarter inch for the saw kerf. And your last board on the mill is always two inch. So you always finish with a two inch board. That's giving you the best hold of everything. So that is the carriage. And the cables from the carriage drive um, just run a loop around, run to the far ends. There's a uh, pulley on each end and then come back and hook to the opposite ends of the carriage. And you can see down here where the cable attaches. So it's just a push-pull system um, and it works very well. It's pretty much what everybody else has done throughout history. They're very effective. Now right here is our outfeed roller table. And I built these rollers in the shop and the table in the shop. The only thing that I bought was the bearings. And these are all three inch rollers with a one inch shaft. And they all turn very nicely. And this is this has been a great addition. Um, I used to saw with the neighbor on his howl and, and we never had this option. This this is a great accessory and we really enjoy it. Uh, makes life a lot easier for us. Currently our horsepower for the mill is a 1952. It's the early Farmall Super M. Uh, and this tractor has actually got the high compression pistons and it had some work done to it before I even got it. Um, so it's it's actually pushing, I believe, 60 horse. And it's it's plenty for what we're doing around here with mostly pine. And I just slow down my feed rate as needed in order to handle the, the oak or whatever. Um, and this blade is actually a 52 inch 32 tooth. And I bought it from Menominee Saw and Supply um, on Peach's recommendation. Uh, he said 32 teeth. He said it'll take less horsepower. It'll be a better blade for me in the long run. And it's been a very good blade. We've been very happy with it. Now our sawdust extraction system <laughs> is actually a 1933 Farmall F12 on steel. I've always wanted one of these and I picked it up several years ago. Um, and then we did a mechanical restoration on it and 
eventually the rest of it will get done. Uh, starts and runs extremely well. Um, it's about perfect for this. Serial number is low enough that it could have had a Waukesha engine, but it got one of the first IH experimentals. And uh, I know the tractor, the serial number before it did get the Waukesha. So according to records that I've seen, it's, uh, it's a very early tractor. And this is our, uh, this is a Minneapolis Moline, I believe, horse-drawn manure spreader that I put higher sides on. And this is how we get rid of our sawdust. And if you've seen the video on, on here of that, it's, uh, it works really well. We spread it on our trails for walking. And... So there you have it, our shop-built circular sawmill. Built entirely in the shop here at Copper Machine LLC. Um, this was a labor of love. I built it because I wanted it. Um, took eight years because of all the other jobs getting in the way, getting, just had to do a little bit at a time because there's always a paying job in the way. So this, this was a, a quite a build and uh, enjoyed every second of it. Next will be the, the finish of the restoration on our four-sided wood planer. We got a pretty good size one of them. Um, that's that's got to get done and then we can finish our lumber. Now, a lot of people have asked me, why wouldn't you build a bandsaw mill? Well, for one, I don't like them. I absolutely hate them. I've worked with them. I, I've been around them. They're so slow, and I've never seen a good board come off of one. You've got to go so slow to get them to cut straight, otherwise they cut wavy. This thing, I pull the lever, shoots the log right through, and a perfect board comes off every time. Uh, in 12 feet, I'm plus or minus a 64th of an inch. Absolutely perfect. And the circular saw and lumber, it, it's such a beautiful board. That rough sawn looks so nice for siding. We sided a shipping container here with it and it just looks beautiful. Um, so that's, that's why I built a circular mill. And I have a steam engine. It would look really stupid belting a steam engine up to a bandsaw mill. And this thing will give it the workout that steam engine deserves. So that's why I did it. That's why I, I like the circle mills way more than I, I just, I don't like the bandsaws. But with that, we're going to end here. So please check out my website, www.toppermachine.com. And please like, subscribe, and share. Stay with us. See what's next. Lots of cool videos on the machine shop and with the, the sawmill and the steam engine. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.